Survey Research Communicating with Respondents, Chapter 10, Business Research Methods. So after studying this chapter, we should be able to summarize ways researchers gather information through interviews, compare the advantages and disadvantages of conducting door-to-door -door mall intercept and phone interviews, evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of distributing questionnaire through the mail, the internet and other means, discuss the importance of pre-testing questionnaire, describe ethical issues that arise in survey research. Mobile surveys catching on and catching respondents on the go is the opening uh, vignette here. So the use of cell phone and smartphone as communication and information management devices has led to new ways of capture opinion of the others. Uh, even the SMS short messaging services, uh, the text messaging has not been lost on the business research market. Mobile survey um, technologies integrate SMS text messaging with electronic surveys. Recipients of a mobile survey receive a text message where they can answer a single or multiple choice questions or even provide open-ended responses to questions anywhere, anytime. So the use of this type of instant feedback survey responses can have many different business applications. If you want to capture the consumer reaction to products over time or want to get a first impression uh, as they use a product initially. So um, current researchers are interested in experiential surveying using mobile surveys to capture people's feelings in that particular instant and they can create a longitudinal understanding of people's attitude and emotional states over time. So mobile surveying is an efficient method to capture data on respondents no matter where they are and text messaging is um, here to stay and um, when somebody sending you a uh, text on their cell phone yeah, they are responding to uh, maybe you have to respond to some questionnaires on the go. During most of the 20th century, obtaining survey data involved inviting individuals to answer questions asked by human interviewers. Interviews or questions, they read themselves questionnaires. Interviewers communicated with respondents face-to-face -face or over phone, or respondents fill out serve administer paper questionnaires, which were typically distributed by mail. So this media for conducting surveys remains popular with business research. Um, but the great impact is the creation of new forms and the new communication medias. So interviews as um, interactive communication. When people engage in a conversation, human interaction takes place. And human um, interactive media are a personal form of communication. One human being directs... Um, uh, a message, one human being directs a message to and interacts with another individual or maybe with a small group. When most people think of interviewing, they envision two people engaged in a face-to-face -face dialogue or a conversation on the phone. Electronic interactive media allows researchers to, to reach a large audience, personalize individual messages, and interact using digital technology. Uh, electronic interactive media are controlled by the users themselves. No other human needs to be present. Survey respondents today are not passive audience members. They are actively involved in a two-way uh, communication using electronic interactive media. The Internet has radically altered many organizations' research strategy, providing uh, an example of electronic interactive media. Consumers determine what information they will be exposed to by choosing what sites to visit and by blocking or closing annoying pop-ups. Uh, electronic interactive media as well includes uh, maybe DVD materials or phone systems or touchscreen kiosk in the stores and other forms of digital technology. Non-interactive media 
The traditional questionnaire received by mail and completed by the respondents did not allow a dialogue or an exchange of information providing immediate feedback. So from our perspective, self-administered questionnaires printed on paper are non-interactive. So this fact does not mean that they are without merit, just that this type of survey is less flexible than surveys using interactive communication media. Each technique for conducting surveys has merit and shortcomings. Uh, and we're going to present the advantages and disadvantages of different approaches to data collection and explain when researchers should use different types of surveys. And in the end, we're going to discuss as well how the Internet and digital technologies are used in uh, survey research. Personal interviews. To conduct interviews, the researcher may communicate with individuals in person by going door to door or intercepting them in shopping malls, or interviews may take place over the phone. While traditionally researchers recovered recorded interviews results using paper and pencil, computers now commonly support survey research. So we're going to see some general characteristics of face-to-face -face, uh, personal interviews and then compare the characteristics of door-to-door -door personal interviews and personal interviews conducted in shopping mall. A personal interview is a form of direct communication um, in which an interviewer asks respondents questions face-to-face. -face. It's versatile and flexible and it's a two-way conversation between the interviewer and the respondent. Advantages. Uh, business researchers find that personal interviews offer m many unique advantages and uh, one of the most important is the opportunity for detailed feedback. Um, and the opportunity for feedback um, provides provide for opportunity and feedback and clarification as well. Um, if a consumer is reluctant to provide sensitive information, the interviewer may offer reassurance that his or her answer will be strictly confidential. Personal interviews offer the lowest chance uh, that respondents will misinterpret questions because an interviewer who senses confusion can clarify the instructions or the questions. Uh, circumstances may dictate that at the conclusion of an interview, the respondent be given additional information concerning the purpose of the study. And this clarification is easily accomplished with a personal interview. If the feedback indicates that some questions or set of questions are particularly confusing, then the researcher can clarify those questions with the respondent and make changes that make the questionnaire easier to understand for future interviews. Um, another one, probing complex answers. Another important characteristic is the opportunity to follow up with the, by the probing. If the respondent answer is too brief or unclear, the researcher may request a more comprehensive or clearer explanation. The interviewer asks for clarification with standardized questions uh, or qualitative research for expanding um, discussion of, of probing, for example or other interview are expected to ask questions exactly as they appear on the questionnaire, probing allowed them some flexibility. And then depending on the research purpose, personal interviews vary in degree to which questions are structured and in the amount of, uh, and the amount of probing required. A skilled interview can handle complex questions that cannot easily be asked in mail survey or even on the phone. The length of an interview. <clears throat> if the research objective requires an extremely lengthy questionnaire, personal interviews may be the only option. And uh, as a general rule of thumb on mail survey is that they should not exceed six pages and phone interview typically last less than 10 minutes. Completeness of questionnaires. The social interaction between a well-trained interviewer and the respondent in a personal interview increase the likelihood that the respondent will answer all the items on the questionnaire. And the respondent who grow bored with a phone interview may terminate the interview at his or her own discretion by simply hanging the phone. But self-administration of male questionnaires requires even more efforts by the questionnaire. Uh, Item non-response is failure to provide an answer to a question is least likely to occur when the experienced interviewers ask questions directly. 
props and visual aid. Uh, interviewing respondents face to face allowed the investigators to show them new product samples, detailed of healthcare options, and mock ups of proposed advertising or other visual aid. Um, a research that uses visual aid has become increasingly popular with researchers who investigate film concepts, advertising problems, and the research for, for moving often begins with showing respondents uh, um, uh, tapes of the prospective cast, for example. High participation. Although some people are reluctant to participate in a survey, the presence of an interviewer generally increases the percentage of people willing to complete the interview and respondents typically are required to do no reading or writing as um, all they have to do is talk and many people enjoy sharing information with insight with friends and sympathetic interviewers. Uh, people are often more hesitant to tell a person no face to face than they are over the phone or through some impersonal contact. The challenges of assessing adult literacy. The need to understand and address functional adult literacy is an important one. The term functionally literate is often misunderstood. In reality, the degree to which adults can adequately function with written materials they are exposed to in their daily lives. And illiteracy creates clear and in some instances not so clear challenges for the adult. While it's clear that the person's literacy is certainly tied to their ability to obtain a good job, they are also challenged by the everyday use of printed and written information, like newspaper, bank statements, and even medical prescription. So is how to understand the level of literacy in a population uh, when those individuals you are most interested uh, may or may not or cannot respond to a written questionnaire in the first place. And then it was this um, this um, um, a National Adult Literacy Survey in uh, uh, 1992 and in 2003 in, in US and they recognized these challenges and developed one of the most comprehensive personal interview and assessment program ever attempted. They conducted in-home uh, personal interviews that around uh, 90 minutes to complete with stratified sample and over 18,000 adults. So um, the respondents were given short and very simple screening questionnaires which would determine if they could proceed. Uh, if they could not complete the short screening tool, they were not required to go further with literacy assessment. So um, the direct and interactive nature of the assessment was really important for the success of this um, uh, challenge. So um, in... Uh, the Department of Education in U.S. in the end were able to understand the degree and trends regarding adult literacy in U.S. and the capture demographic and socioeconomic characteristic of those adults who are challenged from a literacy standpoint. So considering the time and effort required to complete these studies, it's no surprise that they are attended uh, only about maybe once in a decade. Disadvantages of personal interviews. Personal interviews also have some disadvantages. Respondents are not anonymous and as a result may be reluctant to provide confidential information to another person. It's the interviewer influence. Some evidence suggests that demographic characteristic of the interviewer influence respondents answer and may introduce bias. Uh, differential interviewer techniques may be as well a source of bias. Rephrasing of a question, the interviewer's tone of voice and the interviewer's appearance may influence the respondent's answers as well. Lack of anonymity uh, of, of respondent. Because a respondent in a personal interview is not anonymous and may be reluctant to provide confidential information to another person, researchers often spend considerable time and effort to phrase sensitive questions to avoid social desirability bias. Cost. Personal interviews are expensive and generally substantially more costly than mail, phone or internet surveys. 
The geographic proximity of respondents, the length and complexity of the questionnaire, and the number of people who are non-respondents because they could not be contacted, not at home, will all influence the cost of a personal interview. Door-to-door -door interviews and shopping mall intercepts. Personal interviews may be conducted at the respondent's home or offices or in many other places. Increasingly, personal interviews are being conducted in shopping malls. Mall intercepts interview allows many interviews to be conducted quickly. Respondents are intercepted in public areas on shopping malls and then asked to come to a more private research facility within the mall uh, and uh, to view some advertisement maybe. So, um, the local for the interview generally influence the participation rates and the degree of which the sample represents the general population. So, the first one, door-to-door -door interviews. The presence of an interviewer at the door generally increases the likelihood that the person will be willing to complete an interview. Because door-to-door -door interviews increase the participation rate, they may provide a more representative sample of the population than male questionnaire. Door-to-door -door interviews may exclude individuals who live in multiple dwelling units with security systems or high-rise apartment or um, executive who are too busy to grant personal interview during business hours. Um, callbacks. When a person uh, selected to be a sample cannot be contacted on the first visit, a systematic procedure is normally initiated to call back at another time. So callbacks or attempt to recontact individuals selected for the sample are the major mean of reducing non-response errors. Calling back a sample unit is more expensive than interviewing the person the first time around because subjects who initially were not at home generally are more widely dispersed geographically than the original uh, sample units. And callbacks in door-to-door -door interviews are important because not uh, at home individuals may systematically vary from those who are at home, retired people and the like. Being good neighbors meet learning about them. Uh, to use a, the use of door-to-door -door surveys has always represented a challenge for business researchers. They require well-trained survey administrators and can cost a significant amount of money. In addition to the cost, ensuring that you have the correct population of interest complicates the process further. These challenges are not lost on communities as well. Communities often have limited resources and have few ways to capture the need of the citizens. And conducting door-to-door -door survey is often the only way to meet and to capture the attitudes and beliefs of specific population in a particular city or town. So um, the the hard work um, led to inclusion of early elderly adults needed as part of a good neighborhood initiative and this good neighborhood initiative was conducted in 2004-2005 by, by a college and they recognized the opportunity to engage the students in a service learning project and to capture information from an often missed demographic in our society, the elderly. So uh, without going from house to house, it may not have been possible for the community to capture the specific needs of the important population in their city. And in the end, the students had uh, an enlightened learning experience and gained an understanding of the early elderly adults in their own neighborhood. On this slide, we can see some door-to-door -door interview characteristics, speed of data collection, geographical flexibility, respondent cooperation, versatility of questioning, questionnaire length, uh, possibility of respondent misunderstanding, degree of interviewer influence, supervision of the interviewers, um, anonymity of respondents, cost, and special features. These are some characteristics that we can follow. Mall intercept personal interview. Personal interviews conducted in shopping malls are referred to as mall intercept interviews or shopping center sampling. 
Interviewers typically intercept shoppers at the central point within the mall or at an entrance, and the main reason mall intercepts interviews are conducted is because their costs are lower. No travel is required to the respondent's home. Instead, the respondent comes to the interviewers, and many interviewers can be conducted quickly in this way. Uh, a major problem with mall intercepts is that individuals usually are in a hurry to shop, so the incidence of the refusal is pretty high. Um, in the mall interview, the researcher must recognize that he or she should not be looking for a representative sample of the total population. Each mall they has its own target market characteristic, and there is likely to be a larger bias than with carefully household probability sample. Uh, however, personal interviews in shopping malls are appropriate when the target group is a special market segment, um, parents of children of bike riding age, uh, and mall inter uh, interviews are so valuable, uh, and uh, if they are appropriate to, to um, the consumers for the product and demonstrating the product and um, for example, a researcher examining the perception of 3D TV can do so relatively easily in a mall while the effort and expenses required to set up and properly display these TV rules out in, in a home testing environment. Here we have the mall intercept interview characteristics and on the previous slides we had the other ones here so we can compare the same thing, speed of data, length, easy of callback and special features that we can compare with the other one to be the previous one. Yes, personal interview, some global consideration. Willingness to participate in a personal interview varies dramatically around the world. Uh, in some countries, the idea of discussing grooming behavior and personal care products with a stranger would be highly offensive, so few people would consent to be interviewed on such topics, yeah, so it's sensitivity. And some norms about appropriate business conduct as well influence a manager's willingness to provide information to the interviewer. Phone interviews. For several decades, landline phone interviews were the mainstay of commercial survey research. The quality of data obtained by phone is potentially comparable to the quality of data collected face-to-face. -face. Respondents are more willing to provide detailed and reliable information on a variety of personal topics over the phone while in privacy of their own homes uh, than when answering questions face-to-face. Uh, and on the other hand, the Canadian government has instituted um, a Do Not Call program, and the Canadian Radio, TV, and Telecommunication Commission impose fine uh, for calls made to people on the Canadian Do Not Call list. In some countries in Europe and elsewhere, uh, they are having as well some similar legislations. Uh, and this combined with the rapidly increased percentage of population that do not have landline phones, this law, this privacy law, make phone interview less capable of obtaining a representative sample uh, that they used to be um, a few decades ago. Uh, however, a landline phone uh, is still the researcher's best option sometimes. Mobile phone interviews differ from landline phones most obviously because they are directly towards cell phone numbers. But there are some less obvious distinctions. In US, no telemarketing can be directed towards mobile phone numbers by law. And the primary reason for enacting this law is that respondents would often have to pay to receive a call and then they would have to opt in before the phone number would be made available to this type of calls. Uh, recipients of mobile phone calls uh, is even more likely to be distracted than with a call to someone's home or office. Maybe they are driving a car or they are in a subway or walking down a noisy street. Um, uh, factors such as this not only make a survey potentially dangerous, but as well is not conducive to a high quality interviews. Uh, area codes to mobile phones are not necessarily tied geographically and the phones have uh, varying abilities for automated responses and different keypads and um, uh, may be difficult to, to answer 
or you can screen the call nowadays as well this is possible and on this slide we have the same phone interview characteristics like we had for the previous ones now types of um, phone interviews uh, research agencies or interviewing services typically conduct all phone interviews from a central location. Such central location interviewing allows company to hire a staff of professional interviewers and to supervise and control the quality of interviewing more effectively. When phone interviews are centralized and computerized, an agency or business can benefit from additional cost economies. Computer-assisted phone interviews uh, allows respond responses to phone interviews to be entered directly into the computer in a process known as computer-assisted uh, telephone interviewing, CATI. So phone interviewers are seated at a computer terminal with monitors display the questionnaires and one question at a time uh, along with pre-coded possible responses to each question and then the interviewer reads each question that appear on the screen and when they answer uh, the interviewer enters the response directly into the computer and then it's automatically stored in uh, the computer's uh, memory and then the computer displays the next question on the screen and so on and so on um, computer assisted phone interview systems include phone management system that select the phone numbers, dial the numbers automatically and perform other labor saving functions uh, and uh, as well can automatically con control the sample selection by randomly generating names or fulfilling a sample quota. The next one, computerized voice activated phone interviews. Current technology combines computerized phone dialing and voice activated computer messages to allow researchers to conduct, to conduct phone interviews without human um, interviewers. Uh, however, researchers have found that computerized voice activated phone interviewing works best with very short, simple uh, answers. Uh, one system includes a voice synthesized module controlled by a microprocessor. And computer systems usually begin with an announcement that the respondent is listening to a recorded message. And if the respondents do not answer the first two questions, then the computer disconnects and goes to the next call. So uh, with this process, the entire data collection process can be automated because a recorded voice is used to both ask the questions and record the answers as well. Automated phone survey of teens, and in this example, um, is about uh, automatic phone surveys are a good way to reach all members of the family, not just the head of the household. But if you wanted to ask questions about holiday shopping, what for dinner or what kind of vacation the family would like. Uh, one advantage is that no real person has to hear the answer to potential sensitive questions. And then computer assisted phone interviewing, a computerized self interviewing in which the subject uh, listen to pre recorded questions and then they respond and they respond by entering answers with the phone keypad have been used to ask teen in the house about smoking for example and researchers predicted that the young people would be more likely to say they smoke in the self-administered survey than in a response to a live interviewer because pressing the key on a keypad would feel more confidential and the interviewers were right in a self-administered survey the teen were more likely to say they had smoked in the past 30 days or if they had no smoke or the lack of commitment not to smoke in the future. Uh, many of them indicated a parent was present while they answered the question and when they did their responses were less likely to indicate susceptibility to smoking. So this pattern suggests that they might be under-reporting their behaviors and these findings encourage researchers to be attentive to confidentiality when working especially with uh, teenage subjects. Phone interview uh, characteristics, we can see the same, we can compare them with, uh, with the previous slides. Now about self-administered questionnaires, many surveys do not require an interviewer's presence and then researchers distribute questionnaire to consumer through mail 
and in many other ways like we can see here. Uh, they insert questionnaires in packages and magazines and they may place questionnaire at point of purchase or in high traffic locations, in stores or malls, and business researchers may fax or text questionnaires to different individuals. Questionnaires can be printed on paper, but they may be as well posted on the internet or sent via email. No matter how the self-administered questionnaires are distributed, they are different from interviews because the respondent takes responsibility for reading and answering the question. Self-administered questionnaires present a challenge to the researcher because they rely on the clarity of the written word rather than on the skills of the interviewer. And then the nature of self-administered questionnaire is best illustrating by explaining the male questionnaire. The male questionnaire. A mail survey is a self-administered questionnaire sent to respondents through mail, and this paper and pencil method has long been the mainstay of business research and has several advantages and disadvantages. Geographical flexibility can reach geographically dispersed samples simultaneously because interviewers are not required. Cost. Male questionnaires are relatively inexpensive compared with personal interview, though they are not cheap. Most include follow-up mailings, which requires additional postage and printing cost. Respondent convenience. Mail survey and other self-administered questionnaire can be filled out when the respondent have time, so respondents are more likely to take time to think about their replies. Anonymity. Uh, in the cover letter that accompanies the, the mail or, or self-administered questionnaires, uh, researchers almost uh, state that the respondent's answer will be confidential. So respondents are more likely to provide sensitive or embarrassing information when they remain anonymous. Uh, anonymity can as well reduce the social desirability bias. Absence of the interviewer. Although the absence of the interviewer can induce respondents to reveal sensitive or social and unde undesirable information, uh, the lack of personal contact can as well be a disadvantage. Once the respondents receive the questionnaire, the questioning process is beyond the researcher's control. Standardized questions. Uh, male questionnaires typically are highly standardized and the questions are quite structured. Questions and instruction must be clear cut and straightforward. Ambiguous questions only create additional errors. And interviewing allows for feedback from the interviewer regarding the respondent's comprehension of the questionnaire. Um, time is money. Yeah, if, the, if time is a factor in management interest in the researcher's results, or if attitudes are rapidly changing, a survey may not be the best communication medium. A minimum of two or three weeks is necessary for receiving the majority of the responses, and follow-up mailing, which usually are sent when the returns to stop trickling in, they require additional two weeks. So um, uh, it's, it's, it's a time problem. Uh, however, conducting a national study by mail might be substantially faster than conducting personal interview across the nations. And the last one, length of mail questionnaire. Mail questionnaire vary considerably in length, la ranging from extremely short postcard questionnaire to multiple uh, page booklets that require respondents to fill in thousands of, of answers. But the general rule of thumb is that the mail questionnaire should not exceed six pages in, in length. Response rates. The major limitation of mail questionnaire relates to response problems. Virtually all questionnaires that arrive through bulk mail are likely to get thrown away. Questionnaires are boring, unclear, and too complex, or even more likely to get thrown in a wastebasket. A poorly designed mail questionnaire may be returned by less than 5% of those sampled. 
So the basic calculation for obtaining a response rate is to count the number of questionnaires returned or completed and then divide the total by the number of eligible persons who were contacted or requested to participate in the survey. And typically the number in the denominator is adjusted for faulty addresses and similar problems that reduce the number of eligible participants. A researcher's major fear with low response rates is that respondents who complete the questionnaire may not be typically uh, typical of all people in the sample, and individuals with special interest in the topic are more likely to respond to a male survey than those who are indifferent. Uh, evidence suggests that cooperation and response rates rise as home value increase. Uh, male survey respondents tend to be better educated than non-respondents. If, the if they return the questionnaire at all, poorly educated respondents who cannot read and write well may skip open-ended questions to which they are required to write out their answers. Um, increasing the response rates for male surveys. Non-response error is always a potential problem in business research and is especially an issue with male surveys. Individuals who are interested in the general subject of the survey are more likely to respond than those with less interest or little experience. So people who hold extreme positions on an issue are more likely to respond than individuals who are largely indifferent to the topic. So to minimize the bias, business researchers have developed a number of techniques to increase the response rates to mail surveys. And designing and formatting attractive questionnaire and uh, wording questions so that they are easy to understand as well to help ensure a good response rate. Um, special efforts may be required even with the sound questionnaires. A cover letter that accompanies a questionnaire or is printed on the first page of a questionnaire booklet is an important means of inducing a reader to complete and return the questionnaire. And here we can see a cover letter and some of the points considered by the research professional to be important in gaining respondents' attention and cooperation. Yeah, the first paragraph explains uh, why the study is important, then uh, appeal to the social usefulness of responding, and then some other frequently used appeals are asking for help, will you do us a favor, and uh, your opinions are important, and most cover letters promise confidentiality, invite the recipient to use an enclosed postage paid reply envelope, and describe any incentive or reward for participation. So a personalized letter addressed to a specific individual shows the respondent that he or she is important and including an individually typed cover letter or letterhead rather than a printed form is an important element in increasing the response rate in, um, in mail surveys. Another one, money helps. The respondent's motivation for returning the questionnaire may be increased by offering some monetary incentives or premiums. Uh, pens or lottery tickets and a variety of premiums have been used. Monetary incentives appear to be the most effective and the least biasing uh, incentives and money attracts attention and creates a sense of obligation. So that's why the monetary incentives work for all income categories. Interesting questions, the topic of research and uh, the, the points of the questions cannot be manipulated without changing the definition of the research problem. However, certain interesting questions can be added to the questionnaire, maybe at the beginning, to stimulate the respondent's interest and to induce cooperation. Follow-up. Follow-ups. Most male surveys generate responses in a pattern that it show that we can see in this uh, exhibit here, which graph the cumulative response rate from two male surveys, and the response rates are relatively high for the first two weeks, uh, and then uh, the the rates gradually uh, go down. So. Um, 
After responses from the first way of mailing begins to trickle in, most studies use a follow-up letter or a postcard reminding um, a reminder, request the questionnaire to be returned because 100% return rate is important and the follow-up may include a duplicate questionnaire or maybe a reminder only to return the original questionnaire. Another one is uh, advanced notification by either letter or phone that a questionnaire will be arriving has been successful in increasing the response rate in some situations. Uh, advanced notice that go out closer to the questionnaire mailing time produce better results. The optimal lead time for advanced notification appear to be about three days before the mail survey is to arrive. Sponsorship, survey sponsorship. Uh, auspices bias may result from sponsorship of the result and business to business researcher they wish to conduct a survey of, uh, of the wholesaler to learn their stocking policies and their attitude concerning competing manufacturing. A mail questionnaire sent on the corporate letterhead uh, very likely will have received a much lower response rate than the questionnaire actually sent, which used the letterhead of a commercial marketing research for company. So sponsorship by well-known and prestigious organizations such as universities or government agencies may as well significantly influence the response rate and the mail survey sent to members of the consumer panel will receive an exceptionally high response rates because the panel members have already agreed to cooperate. And other techniques, uh, different other devices have been used for increasing response rate, uh, type of postage, uh, envelope size, the color of the questionnaire paper, and many other factors have been varied in efforts to increase the response rate. But each has had a least limited success in certain situations. Uh, the researcher should consider his or her particular situations. And... Um, the last one, a uh, king mail questionnaire with codes, a researcher planning uh, a follow-up letter or a postcard should not disturb respondents who already have returned the questionnaires. Uh, the expenses of mailing questionnaires to those who already have responded is usually avo uh, avoidable. And one device for eliminating those who have already responded from some follow-up mailing list is to mark the questionnaire so that they may be keyed to identify members of the sampling frame who are non-respondents. Fax survey. With fax survey, potential survey respondents receive and or return questionnaire through fax machines. A questionnaire inserted in a magazine may instruct the respondent to clip out the questionnaire and fax it to a certain phone number. In a mail survey, a prepaid postage envelope plays little burden on the respondent. A disadvantage of the fax survey is that only respondents with fax machines who are willing to exert the extra effort will return the questionnaires. And people with extreme opinions will as well be more likely to respond. Um, a fax machine can as well be used to distribute questionnaires, and this fax survey reduces the sender's printing and postage cost and can be delivered and returned faster than traditional mail surveys. Questionnaire distributed through fax uh, can deal with timely issues as well. Though relatively few households have fax machine, when the sample consists of organizations that are likely to have fax machine, the sample coverage may be adequate. Email surveys. Questionnaires can be distributed through email, but researchers must remember that some individuals cannot be reached this way. Certain projects do lend themselves to email surveys, such as internal surveys of employees or satisfaction surveys of retail buyers who regularly deal with an organization through email. The benefits of incorporating a questionnaire in an email include the speed of the distribution, lower distribution and processing cost, faster turnaround time, more flexibility, and less handling of paper questionnaire. The speed of email distribution and the quick response time can be a major advantage for surveys dealing with time-sensitive um, um, issues. 
Some researchers have argued as well that many respondents feel they can be more candid in email than in person or on the phone for the same reasons they are open with other self-administered questionnaires. In general, the guidelines for printed mail surveys apply to email surveys as well. However, some differences exist because the cover letter and the questionnaire appears in a single email message and the potential respondent who is not immediately motivated to respond, especially one who considered an unsolicited email survey to be spam, can quickly hit the delete button to remove the email. Uh, email has another important role in survey research. Email letters can be used as cover letter asking respondents to participate in an internet survey. And such uh, emails typically provide the password and the link to a unique website location that requires a password to access. Internet Survey is a self-administered questionnaire posted on a website, and the use of Internet Survey has grown exponentially over the past decade, as easy-to-use web survey software has become widely available. Um, every other type of survey, Internet Survey, have both advantages and uh, disadvantages. And here we can see some characteristics of Internet Survey. Um, Speed and cost effectiveness, they allow the researcher to reach a larger audience, global one, uh, personalized individual messages and secure confidential answers are quick and cost effective, visual appeal and interactivity, uh, a researcher can use more sophisticated lines of questioning based on the respondent's prior answers, and this interactive survey uses color, sound, animation that may help increase the respondent's cooperation and willingness to spend time answering the questionnaire. So the internet is an excellent medium for, for presentation of visual materials, pictures and drawings on product prototypes and advertisement and movie trailers. All kinds of innovating measuring instruments can take advantage of the ability to use background, different fonts and colors uh, that have been designed and applied with all kinds of success. Respondent participation and cooperation. Uh, some internet surveys occur because computer users intentionally navigate to a particular website uh, where questions are displayed. Um, and for many other internet surveys, respondents are initially contacted through email first. Um, Ideally, um, there, there's a welcome screen that contains the name of the research company and all the information about how to contact the organization if the respondent has a problem or, uh, or concern. Representative sample, the population to be studied and the purpose of the research and the sampling methods determine the quality of the internet sample, which varies substantially. Uh, if a sample consists merely of those who visit a web page and voluntarily fill out a questionnaire, then it's not likely to be representative of the entire population of interest due to self-selection error. Um, so, uh, for the foreseeable future internet survey sampling, uh, the general public should be designed with the recognition that problems may arise uh, for, um, for this, this type of reasons. And um, pictures, animation, video streams, and all kinds of technological features created on the researchers or web designers' powerful computers needs to be simplified or to eliminate so that all respondents can as well interact at the same level of technological sophistications. Yes, some individuals have minimal computer skill. They may not know how to navigate or to provide different answers to internet questionnaires or they don't have access to internet as well. Accurate real-time data capture. Um, the computer-to-computer -computer nature of the internet surveys means that each respondent's answers are entered directly into the researcher's computer as soon as the questionnaire uh, is submitted. And um, questionnaire software may be programmed to reject improper data entry. Um, real-time data capture allows for real-time data analysis 
and the researcher can review uh, up to the minute the sample size count and tabulation data from internet surveys in real time. Callbacks, when the sample for an internet survey is drawn for a consumer panel, those who have not completed the survey can be easily recontacted, and computer software can simply automatically send email reminders to panel members who did not visit the welcome page. Personalized and flexible questioning, internet surveys are programmed in much the same way as computer-assisted phone interviews and that the software that is used allows questioning to branch off into two or more different lines depending on the respondent answers to a filter of questions. So the difference is that there are there is no interviewer and the respondent interacts directly with the software on a website. Respondent anonymity. Respondents are more likely to provide sensitive or embarrassing information when they can remain anonymous. Response rate. Uh, the method of improving response rates for an internet survey are similar to those for other kinds of survey research and the personalized invitation is important and that one delivered through email as well. And security concerns, the last one, many organizations worry that hackers or competitors may access the website to discover new products, concept, new advertising campaigns, and other top secret ideas. But respondents may worry whether the personal information may uh, or will remain private. So uh, may the organization that's sponsoring the research as well. This is another uh, snapshot here, mixed data, uh, mixed mode data collection, uh, the case of web and phone surveys. Uh, do web survey adequately capture the population's attitude and perceptions? While advantages in time and cost efficiency of internet-based surveys are obvious, uh, questions about the effectiveness of this approach to data collection remain. So major criticism of waste survey is the low response rate, typically 10 to 20 percent. While the low response rate is not necessarily an issue in itself, it does present the possibility of non-response error. So uh, research, re recent research investigates this issue in the business-to-business -business context by conducting phone surveys with non-respondents to web survey. So. Um, Response rate uh, range from 11 to 15 percent across uh, three industries, and while while certainly not conclusive, it appears that web-based surveys are not only fast and cost-effective, but provide the same information as far more costly phone surveys. And business managers will be happy to know that the investment in phone surveys may not be necessary in the future. Other approaches, kiosk interactive survey. A computer with a touch screen may be installed in a kiosk, at a trade show, at a professional conference, in an airport, or in another high traffic location to administer an interactive survey. Because the respondent chooses to interact with an on-site computer, self-selection often is a problem with this type of survey. Computer literate individuals are more likely to complete the interactive questionnaires. Um, survey research that mixed modes. Uh, for many survey research objective dictates the use uh, of some combination of phone, mail, email, internet, and personal interviews. Uh, for example, the researcher may conduct a short phone in screening interview to determine whether respondents are eligible for recontact in a more extensive personal interview. So such a mixed mode survey uh, combines the advantages of a phone survey or a fast screening and those of a personal interview. A mixed mode survey can employ any combination of two or more survey methods. And conducting a research study in two or more waves, however, creates the possibility of some respondents will no longer cooperate or will be unavailable in the second wave of the survey. 
and text messages uh, as we've discussed at the beginning um, uh, surveys are being sent through text messages they may use uh, SMS short message systems or MMS multimedia services and this technique is perhaps the newer survey approach approach and has all the advantages of mobile phone surveys in terms of reach and it also uh, shares the disadvantages in terms of reaching respondents who have not opted in through mobile phone. Uh, MMS uh, messages can include graphic displays on even short videos as well, so this technology is likely to see more application in the near future. Selecting the appropriate survey design uh, earlier um, discussions of research design and problem definition emphasize that many research tasks may lead to similar decision-making information. So there is no best form of survey. Each has advantages and disadvantages, and a researcher who must ask highly confidential questions may use a mail survey, sacrificing the speed of data collection to avoid bias. If a researcher must have considerable control over the question phrasing, then central location phone interview may be appropriate. So to determine the appropriate technique, the researcher must ask several questions. Uh, and we, we see these questions on the slide. Is the assistance of an interviewer necessary? Are respondents highly interested in the issue being investigated? Will cooperation be easily attained? How quickly is the information needed? And will the study require uh, a long and complex questionnaire? Uh, and how large is the budget, obviously, as well? What information about the population is available, as well? So, um, advantages and disadvantages of, are for all of them for door-to-door, -door, mall intercept, phone, mail, internet survey, but um, it emphasizes the typical types of the survey. Pre-testing. A researcher who surveys 3,000 consumers does not want to find out after the questionnaires have been completed or returned that most respondents misunderstood a particular question or skipped a series of questions or misinterpreted the instruction for filling out the questionnaire. So to avoid this type of problem, screening procedure or pre-test are often used. Pre-testing involves a trial run with a group of respondents to iron out fundamental problems in the instruction or the design of a questionnaire. The researchers look for some obstacles at the point at which respondents uh, fatigue set in, whether there are any particular places in the questionnaire where respondents tend to terminate or if some specific questions are skipped. Uh, despite its substantial value, this stage of research is unfortunately sometimes eliminated because of uh, time and um, um, cost, yeah, cost or time pressure. Uh, there are three basic ways to pretest. The first two involve screening the questionnaire with uh, other research professionals, and the third, the most often called pretesting, is a trial run with a group of respondents. When screening the questionnaire with other research professionals, the investigator asks them to look for problems as difficulties with questions, wording, leading questions, or bias due to the order of the questions. And an alternative type of screening might involve a client or a research manager who ordered the research. And um, only by checking with individual who has requested the questionnaire uh, does the researcher know for sure that the information needed will be provided as well. And ethical issues in survey research. Many ethical issues um, apply to survey research as uh, respondents' right to privacy, the use of deception, uh, respondents' right to be informed about the purpose of the research, the need for confidentiality, the need for honesty in collecting data, and the need for objectivity in reporting data as well. This was today's uh, lecture. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you.